see. So burdened in sin and distress, till I heard a sweet voice saying, Make me your choice. And I entered the haven of rest. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide seas no more. The tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep in jesus i'm safe evermore and uh, feel free to ask any questions make any comments just like anybody else uh, we'll be in the sixth chapter of hebrews and we'll start with the fourth verse again Paul is trying to tell the church, uh, a Hebrew church, a Jewish church, uh, forget your religion, forget what everything you've always been taught, and strive for spiritual progress. You know, if, if we if we as Christian people uh, are not growing spiritually, we're in trouble. The church is in trouble. Uh, as Brother Robert brought up this morning about faithfulness, how can you be faithful if you don't grow spiritually? You can only go so far because you don't know anything. Uh, it's our job to keep ourselves in the place where God can use us. It's our job to study the Word of God. And it's our job then to obey and live a life according to the Word of God. So with that in uh, in mind, we're going to go on to the fact that if we get uh, content for we're at, uh, as we brought out earlier again, uh, the children of Israel were content for a while, but they complained more than they praised God for his blessings. No matter what happened, you know, God would bless them and bring them through whatever. The next thing, you know, that's complaining, we should have stayed in Egypt. We should have done this. If we as Christians keep saying, oh, well, you, what use is it? Nobody cares. Nobody's going to listen. Our job is to live a life that people can see Jesus Christ in us. And there's, there's trouble coming for us as Christian people who are not going spiritually. There, there's a danger in not doing what we're supposed to. And the fourth verse will start with the sixth chapter of Hebrews. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come, if they shall fall away and renew them again unto repentance, saying they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. For the earth was for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessings from God. But that which here that which bears thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But beloved we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation through though we thus speak. I'm going to stop there just for a second. Anybody have a question or comment on these verses? I believe that uh, verse 4 through 9 is probably some of the mis most misunderstood scriptures in the Word of God. I've got friends, good friends, Christian friends, uh, that belong to different churches and different denominations and have different ideas. And they say <clears throat> the number one reason you're wrong about you could be saved 
and lost. You can backslide and finally be lost. Is this verse right here? For it's impossible. That's not what it's saying. You know, we got to take this piece of scripture, verse 4, all the way through 9, and then add it with the whole word of God to understand what it means. Uh, even Bible scholars uh, argue the difference, and I mean argue, that once saved, always saved, and nothing can ever happen to you. Nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. And the Bible says that to a point. But there are more exceptions to that than just that. Uh, if, you, if you're not growing, you well, there's a chance you fall away because you don't know. But it, it, it's not saying it's impossible to come back to God. If it is, it's making the rest of the Word of God a liar. The whole Word of God tells us to live a repentant life. Uh, in John, 1 John 1 and 9, one of the most in the scriptures, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, and the verse before that says what? Little children said, you know, said not. We as Christian people shouldn't sin. We as Christian people, our desire is not to sin. But the Apostle Paul himself said in Corinthians, I believe it was, the things that I wouldn't do, that's what I do. In other words, he was a Christian, but he was a man. And that makes him what? The same thing that we are today. We, if we're a human being, we're a sinner. That's what we are. The Bible teaches us in Genesis that our hearts are continually evil. Except we receive the grace of God and live a repentant life. Uh, we, we need to understand that we're not perfect. We're human beings. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to stand. We're going to come short, short, but the Holy Spirit is there to lead, guide, and direct us. And when we sin as Christian people, it convicts us of our sin. And what do we do? We say, oh, well, God, God, God overlooked that. God doesn't overlook sin. The Bible teaches us no sin will enter in. It didn't say no sin by some atheist. It says no sin. Everybody, every human being has to live a life according to the Word of God. Uh, <clears throat> and just because we're saved, Mama. Oh. we shouldn't stop there. That's where we should begin to grow. That's where we should be what God would have us to be. If Caleb, had, as Brother Robert wants to if Caleb had, Caleb had done like everybody else, he said, they're right. You know, we can't beat them people. But he kept his faith. He knew what God had promised. And because of that, he went through and God blessed him. You know, and the, the, the people of Israel. Uh, so many people are confused. And, and we all realize, I, I, I've just brought it out to a point, uh, we're all human. Okay? And then we that are saved are spiritual. So many people want to separate the two. I'm human. I make mistakes. But the Spirit leave died and direct me. And I know people that say, well, now I didn't really sin. The real me, the spiritual me, didn't sin. I'm a Christian. I didn't sin. It was the human side of me that sinned. If God wouldn't hold that against me, one of the biggest lies that the devil has ever told. Uh, the Bible teaches us our body is the temple. The spirit dwells within us to lead God and direct us in the right way. If we sin, it's because we left the spirit. If we, if we stay in the Word of God, if we stay in the center of God's will, and that Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is lead God directing us, we won't sin. But again, it's been brought out time and time again, we're all free moral agents. 
I can do what I want to do. I know what I'm supposed to do as a Christian person, but sometimes the human fights against the spirit and overcomes it. That's what I say. When I get out of the center of God's will, when I'm not listening to the Word of God, if the Spirit, you know, I, I don't believe that anybody sins necessarily on purpose as a Christian person. But we do from time to time. But the Spirit shows us that we've done it wrong. We've sinned. we got to make it right. But there are times when, like I said, we as a human part of me overcomes the Spirit because down deep, that's really what I want to do. You know, I just, I just want to do that. And the Spirit's telling you all the time, don't do that. That's not, that's not right, you know. We live on that fine line, I guess you say, sit on the fence. If we sit on the fence, we're in trouble. So we're going to fall sooner or later. What we have to do is get off the fence and stay in the Word of God. In first, in first John again, one and ten said, "If we say we have no, have not sinned, I'm sorry. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us." Plain and simple. I can tell you, and I say, I've got friends that say, well, "I don't sin. I do wrong, but God won't hold that against me." The scripture just plain tells us, if we say that. It's not really a sin to me because God forgives me of my sins, my past, my present, and my future sins. The Bible doesn't teach that. When I was saved, I was forgiven of my past sins and my present sins. But as part of being saved, I believe that it's a three-step three thing. You're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Sanctification is cleansing yourself, cleaning yourself up, changing yourself, making yourself, the Bible tells us, we're a new creature. That's the part that we work with. We have to fight that every day to be a new creature. The Holy Ghost is there to, you know, God forgive me my past sins. Now it's up to me to live according to the Word of God. And if I don't, what do I do? I have an attitude with the Father who just did Give me. You know, it's just that simple. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 9 27, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Least by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself. Thank God. It's our job. It was Paul's job. Paul, Paul said, It's my job to keep myself, my body under control. The human body has desires, has needs that are different, left to itself, left without the Spirit of God, without being saved. That we do all sorts of things. We're evil people. You know, I like to think I'm a pretty good old boy, you know. But the simple fact, without the love of God, without the Spirit of God, and, lead, and leadership and guidance, of the Holy Spirit, I'm evil. I can be evil. I have been evil. Lord, forgive me of that. You say, oh, I wouldn't do that. Yes, you will. We're all able as human beings to do the same thing. Hey, it's a natural thing for human beings. You do me wrong, I hate you. That's normal. That's what people do. But being Christian in the Spirit of God, we no longer hate. We forgive. May not forget it, but we got to forgive. Anybody have a question or comment? You know, Brother Ron, I can say this out of my own personal experience. As a young Christian, it was hard for me to imagine, you know, being able to slide so far back that you actually are failing. I mean, honestly, it was, it was hard to fathom that. But after lots of prayer and, you know, 
to study the Word. God showed me what He says is what He says. And at the end of the day, it all boils down to whether you want the truth or not. Because I can remember praying, you know, God, I just want the truth. I just want the truth. There was lots of circumstances. And I was kind of being tugged down a little bit. Satan was throwing all kinds of junk at me. But you want the truth? He'll show you the truth. Because that is the truth. I mean, to make verse 6 alone, you know, when you, uh, you talk about it being the most, uh, most misunderstood, when it says that you you uh, put the Son of God, you oh, uh, crucified to themselves the Son of God first and put him to an open shame, to me that says it all. Right there. I mean, how could you think you're right if you're, you know, putting Christ to shame? Yeah, we, we have to understand uh, what God did for us. God sent his only begotten son to suffer, shed his blood that we could be saved. And it's the same thing you say, well, uh, uh, again, that's different. No, as human beings, <clears throat> as your family grows, there's times in, that come up that maybe you were on children uh, at the point where and what they did kind of bring shame to you. Open shame. Well, let's face it, no matter who you are, what you are, no matter how good you try to raise your children, how you bring them up in the best way you can, they're going to be what they're going to be. And what do people say when your kids get in trouble? They didn't raise it right. They didn't, it's your fault. It's the parents' fault. And when they're grown, there's nothing you can do to stop it. But people still do that. And that's how I take this scripture to brought up hope and shame. If I tell you I'm a Christian, and I, I witness, and that's our job as Christians, to witness through our daily life. I don't have to give a testimony. I don't have to speak to you. But my daily life should show Christ in my life. She show you what a difference Christ makes in your life. But then when I fail, when I sin and come short, if I don't make it right, especially people of the world, people that see you every day and bring Jesus Christ to shame on they're no different than I am. I'm just as good as they are. And the truth is, every person out there is just as good as I am. The difference is I've been saved by grace. We need to understand those things. Paul, in the ninth verse, Paul is just exhorting it. If you've got a uh, Thompson Bible, right beside that verse, it says, But beloved, we are persuaded better things than you, and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. Right beside it, it says what? Exhortation to continue faith. Being a Christian is something we have to work at. Just like everything else we do, we have to work at it. To grow in faith, to grow in strength, to grow in knowledge. What you got to do, you've got to work at it. Oh, no, the Bible says, if you need to know something, the Holy Spirit will show it to you. Sometimes it works that way. But it all, the Holy Spirit, you have to get into the Word of God and to understand it, the Holy Spirit shows you what it says. See, we just can't, we just can't sit back, twiddle our thumbs, and say, "Well, I needed that He'd come to me." Well, if you don't read the Word of God, if you don't pray, how do you know where to look? How do you know what to do? It's all here. We just have to be able to understand it. So all, all Paul's trying to do in these verses is telling everybody need to be careful to continue in faithfulness to God. It's not that hard if you stay in it. If I keep me out of the way, it's not that hard at all. You can't separate me from God. I've never been a person anywhere that can separate me from God. Only me. Only me. You 
say, oh, that's not, that's not really real. The Bible tells me, it starts off in the Old Testament even, sin will separate us from God. God won't hear our prayers for sin in our life. We heard that this morning. Plain and simple. Before I can pray and get to God, I'm going to get my heart right. And that's all Paul's trying to tell the early church and us as Christians, young Christians. <coughs> and we've got to continue with it. I can't be a Christian today, send it tomorrow, a Christian today, send it tomorrow. I've got to continue with my faithfulness to God. Any questions or comments? Verse 10. And this is, this is what we need to remember as Christian people. For God is not unrighteous, unrighteous to forget your work and labor and love, which you have shewed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to full to the full assurance of hope to the end. We'll stop there, question and comment. God knows our hearts. God knows everything we think. God knows everything we do. So we need to, as Christian people, we need to remember that, that God doesn't forget our faith. Robert brought that out real well this morning. Uh, and you'll have people say, well, now, wait a minute. You say you've been faithful. you try to do your best. Uh, I may be the weakest Christian that ever lived. But God has been faithful to me. He said, oh, buddy, you got cancer. So, God has brought me through it. God will bring me to it. One way, you know, every how it ends, it'll be God's will. And God is faithful. And has kept me the things that I have is a blessing from God. And I believe this from my faithfulness to God. Uh, I'm never going to be rich that I know of. Possible. If I get rich, it has to be a gift from somebody. Uh, Never going to be famous. Never going to be all these things that most people in the world look for to be happy. But I've been blessed. A good church, a good family, good Christian friends. And most of all, I've been blessed with the peace of knowing that Jesus Christ is my Savior. Lay my head down at night in peace and go to sleep no matter what the results will be during the night. If I die or if I get up, it'd be the will of God. And it's all brought out time and time again. You know, for me to live is Christ, for me to die is gain. So what a blessing that is. To realize that God, that God has understood that I accepted Jesus as my Savior. And uh, my desire is to fulfill and endure until the end. Question or comment? That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience, <coughs> excuse me, inherit promises. Question or comment? See, again, all Paul, again, this whole chapter is just, again, we as Christian people need to make progress. We need to endure. We need to be faithful to understand the Bible is full of promises. God has made promises to his people. We also need to understand in the Old Testament, he made a promise to Abraham to make the children of Israel a great nation. Uh, when they left Egypt, what happened to them? 
millions of them died on the journey because of their unbelief. But God generally has promised those that were faithful made it to the promised land. And they were at one time the greatest nation on earth. Why are they not the greatest nation on earth today? It's because they left God. An example for us, history, is an example for us today that we don't need to call the same things. We as Christian people need to understand the promises that God made is true. They're sure. They're going to happen. If we do our part. If we remain faithful. We can't be unfaithful to God to expect Him to bless us and keep His promises to us. Anybody have a question or comment? If not, we thank you.
Det er mig, der skal have spørgsmål. Hvor er det så godt at være her med dig? Jeg vil takke alle og alle for at komme ud og være med os denne morgen. Jeg prøver, at Charlie har en blæsning ved at komme denne vej. Jeg vil takke dig meget for at bruge for os, så vi gør noget for os selv. Jeg ved ikke, hvad Lord vil have os til. You know, it's another good uh, Sunday the Lord's given us, and uh, you know what? I, I believe the Bible tells us to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, not just today, but every day. Uh, you know, it's a new day of life. Uh, we wake up, we thank the Lord for what He's done for us and all that He's been for us in our life. And uh, I, you know, and I, I was thinking hard about that this morning. Is that how many times in life have we not thought about that, but the Lord's still done what He said He would do? And, uh, right. You know, I know there's many times that it ain't been the first thing that I woke up thinking about. And, uh, you know, shame on me for that because it is a blessing that God's given us. Uh, but he still was there working. He was still there doing exactly uh, what he says. So, you know, uh, I'm thankful for those times that the Lord is uh, is faithful and uh, he's able to do all things. And, uh, uh, you know, what I'm, I'm trusting him this morning. I'm glad that I can say that. So, uh, uh, you know, this morning, uh, if we're not in that condition, uh, you know what, now's the time that we can get it. Uh, you know what, the Bible is very clear and straightforward, and I think that we've been talking about it quite a lot here lately. Uh, uh, you know what, it speaks of the now time. It speaks of where we're standing. Uh, you know what, it's not today, or not yesterday, it's or not tomorrow, it's right now. Uh, today is the day of salvation, now is the appointed time. Uh, so you know what, so let's uh, all uh, continue to remember that as we speak in, uh, of the Word of God and uh, uh, do what He has us do. And uh, you know what, so we are here by blessing of the Lord, and uh, uh, you know what, I'm thankful for that. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And after that, we'll go ahead and get the message. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us. We thank you for yet another opportunity to make a stand for you today, dear Lord. And we uh, pray that you just uh, begin to move us out of the way, dear Lord, for a little while. And just uh, I just begin to let the words go out the way that you'd have them go. And uh, uh, that we all be uh, uh, attentive to, to what your word is, is trying to let us know today, dear Lord, that we can apply it to our lives and go out and better serve you in this world that we're living in right now, dear Lord. We thank you uh, for the many provisions of life that you've been able to bestow upon us, dear Lord. And uh, uh, we thank you most of all for that salvation that you've given us, dear Lord, that we are able to feel that spirit that comes by and it comforts us in a, a time of need, and maybe a time of struggle, dear Lord. We just thank you uh, uh, right now for the uh, the church family that we have and that we're all able to gather together today, dear Lord. We just pray that a special blessing uh, come upon each and every one of us today, dear Lord. And we pray, uh, uh, dear Lord, for those that are out there that are sick and uh, uh, maybe fighting the battle of, of an illness of the body, dear Lord. Just pray uh, uh, that you just reach down and touch that ailment, dear Lord. And uh, uh, whichever way you see fit, dear Lord, and we will uh, uh, trust in you and all your leadership and guidance and direction in that. And uh, uh, this morning, as we uh, uh, go throughout our daily lives, even though we may not understand some things, dear Lord, and why things happen, uh, I would pray, dear Lord, that you just give us peace and comfort in our minds and our hearts, dear Lord. I would pray most of all, dear Lord, for those who are lost and undone out in the world and don't know you to free pardon and forgiveness of sin. We pray that today be the day, dear Lord, uh, uh, that conviction be poured out upon them, dear Lord, and uh, uh, they come to know you for it's everlastingly too late, dear Lord. We thank you once again uh, for our church. We thank you for uh, all of our family able to be here, dear Lord. We just pray uh, uh, that you just uh, begin to bless us, lead God and direct us in the way you'd have us go, uh, and forgive us where we fail and come short so many times. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, once again, we got a thought upon our heart to, uh, today. We're going to try our best to preach about it. And, uh, uh, you know what? And I, the Lord was dealing with us all uh, throughout the week on this. And uh, I don't know really what provoked it. Can't give you a story or background on that. Uh, but you know what? I, I got to thinking the other day. And uh, you know what? I was never a fan of scary movies growing up. Uh, you know what? I, I, I never wanted to do that. I'm, I've always been partial to comedies and action movies. I uh, you know, I guess that's how it is. I had to have my Power Rangers and uh, uh, things like that growing up and anything that could make me laugh. But uh, scary movies were not a part of me. And, uh, you know, I never got quite got the concept of making yourself scared or something. Uh, because, you know, I think life does that enough. I think that life, if uh, you live any bit of time, you'll find out what you're scared of. And, uh, you know what, and the world is real good at bringing about those things that, that are fearful. Uh, you know, maybe fearful in, in the, the sense of paranoia. Uh, you know, that's the only way we know fear today is what, what makes us paranoid in our own minds to think of that it, it might get us. It might be that monster under the bed when we were a child and uh, uh, things like that that uh, just kind of get our minds going in a direction to, to where we think that fear is such a bad thing. You know, I was, I was thinking about my, in my adult life, uh, in my career life, I guess, uh, and the jobs that I've worked over the years. And, uh, uh, you know, what I've watched a lot of safety videos. And I know if anybody's watching these safety videos, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say this. Is that most of the time if you watch a safety video, it'll tell you more about what can kill you, what can hurt you and harm you in any way, more than it tells you about safety. And uh, you know what? Because I believe that the goal of the safety video is to make sure that you've got the information you need to know what to stay away from. 
And you know, as I was thinking about fear in itself and uh, uh, what we view it as, and I, I was, I guess I, that might have been what it was the other day. I was sharing with some of the guys we were working with about how much them videos would spend the time telling you what was going to kill you if you didn't watch out. And uh, you know what? If, it, if, that didn't, if you weren't scared going in, maybe you were scared coming out. I remember the first time I went and took a, uh, a serve safe certification test. Uh, you know, and they taught me all the different uh, uh, stuff that could be in your food whenever uh, uh, you're preparing to be careful with. And if it got there, how it could make you sick. And you know what? It opened up my eyes a lot. And I started to do a little bit better than what I was doing. I don't think I was doing too bad. But you know what? It, it opened up my eyes to what these foodborne illnesses could be and the steps that I could take. Well, you know, as I was thinking about all those things that provoked the thought within me right here, I started thinking about what it is to live for God. Uh, you know, like I said, some crazy things come out of me sometimes like that. And you know, I was uh, sitting there, and I guess it was maybe uh, uh, the, the opportunity we get to live our lives in front of those that are out there in the world and uh, uh, that don't know Him. And uh, uh, you know what? As, as I begin to realize right here, there is but one thing that keeps us in life. There is but one thing that a man needs to learn. You know what? And I believe that the Old Testament was written, and it was repeated over and over again. God, in the very beginning of time, He told them, that they are, whenever they raise up in the morning, uh, at all times they are to teach their children of the Word of God. The Word of God was given and there was repeated over and over again. There was a history book written in the book of the Old Testament that they continued to read even in the times when Jesus came about. The reason why was is there was teachings that need to be taught about how history went down how people had to learn from their mistakes. You know what, there's two ways, I believe, to come about this. And, uh, and you know what, as, as we're speaking, I guess we need to go ahead and say it. Uh, uh, we're talking about the fear of the Lord. That's the only thing that keeps us in line. That's the only thing that keeps you and I going on a straight and narrow path. You know what, if we were left to ourselves, we would go out and do whatever we wanted to do. And before we know it, we'd be straight away. And you know what, it's not that hard to do. I, you know, I think that we've all probably fallen into that territory at one point in our life, even after salvation. Uh, you know what, we got out in the world, we dabbled in sin a little bit before we knew it. We thought it wouldn't hurt, hurt very much to do this or that, but before we knew it, we was out of it. Uh, you know what, it, it's, not, it's not that hard. But there is but one thing that keeps us in the line. And I, you know what, I know that when I was saved as a young boy, uh, you know, there was something that was put within me that gave me the ability to please God, and that is His Holy Spirit. And by that Holy Spirit, it lets me know uh, whenever there are times in my life to where I start to get in that, uh, maybe that area right there to where it's uh, uh, leaning towards straying away. Whenever things become questionable in my life, uh, that Spirit is there to teach me, guide me, and direct me in the way that I should go. It keeps me on that straight and narrow path. But it is out of the fear of the Lord uh, that I begin to stay in those ways. And you know, I was sitting here and I was thinking about how they read those scriptures over and over and over again. And they, they, we know they come up with their own ways to try to, uh, to keep these scriptures. They thought that it gave them something uh, to put them above everybody else. You know what? And there's not the one thing that puts us above anybody else in a, a today. Is it? And, I, and I'm going to tell you, not that I'm any better than anybody, but I've been saved. I, you know what? I've been sanctified. I've been set apart. I, I'm a child of God. You know what? That's what the children of Israel had. They had it in the Scriptures. They were told what needed to be told. But they didn't have the fear of the Lord anymore. So you know what we see right here is, is that we think about fear as being a bad thing. But to God, to fear God is, 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 is the number one thing. To know who He is. Know what He does. Know what He's capable of. You know what? I know that we serve a God that's capable to do anything. If we got sickness, He can heal that. If we've got some trouble in our life, He can take care of that. But you know what? He's a God that can do all things, so therefore, if one would transgress against Him, He's also a God of wrath. God that bring judgment upon sin, all the sin of the world. It's going to be one day after a while, have to have an experience. So, you know, that's what we kind of get. There's but two ways to come about the fear of the Lord. You can come by, by knowledge, by learning, or you can come by experience. And you know what? And as I brought out in the Old Testament earlier, so many times, the children of Israel had to learn by experience. It was always a, a tough time for them. It was always a time that came about to where they were transgressing against God. They strayed away. They worshipped other gods. And what had to happen? There was captivity. There was famine. There was things that would begin to come about them that even though they were the children of God, the very thing that they held themselves above everybody else, yet they did not have the fear of the Lord. So what did God do? He put the fear in them. And you know what? One day after a while, I believe that this is going to happen. You know what? It, it is so much better because we have the Word. 
We have the very words that are spoken out of the mouth of the Lord, written down by man, yes, but it's inspired of the Holy Spirit. That we realize that we can learn how to fear God. We can learn by the way of the Spirit coming in and then leading God and direct us in His Word by the things that He's already said, the other things He's already put down. You can learn now or you can come by experience later. And you know what I'm going to tell you? There are some things I know that you have to go through, you have to experience in order to learn. You know what? I believe that you and I, if we've been saved and born again, uh, day in, day out, we're, we're, learning, we're learning how to fear God every day. Amen. You know what? But it's so much better to where when we have Him within us, when we got that Spirit guiding us and leading us in His Word, that we can learn of these words before it ever happens. You know what? I'm not saying that we're going to be perfect. I'm not going to say that we're going to avoid this because there have been times where I knew the Word of God said something, but I've done it anyway. But you know what? That's why that God uses that experience to put us back in. So you know what? I'm going to tell you, I, I, this scripture right here, a very familiar chapter right here, will usually lean toward the end of it right here, but I'm going to start a little earlier. The 34th chapter of the book of Psalms. We'll start verse 7. It says, The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him, and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is, is he that desireth life and loveth many days, and he that may do may see good, keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking God. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. You know that scripture right there, like I said, you read on down, we might get into it here in a little bit, but uh, the fear of the Lord is what is, I believe David is speaking of right here. You know, this come at a time in David's life where uh, uh, you know what his, his behavior is, his mindset on things had to take a change. You know, David was living in the fear of his life. He, uh, the things of the world were crashing down upon him. He was thinking about all the bad things going on. Uh, uh, you know what? Who was pursuing after him? I, uh, you know what? I, I believe it named Abimelech uh, uh, on back in there. And uh, you can look it up in Samuel, I believe. Uh, but you know, as I was uh, uh, thinking about the mindset that David kept, you know what? He was just like us. I, you know, I didn't like scary movies. When I watched those safety videos, I, I seen all the things that could take my life. And you know, I'm sitting here thinking, uh, what is the Lord trying to prove to David? Because David changed for one reason and one reason only. is because he, he, he began to think about what the Lord had done for him. He brought him out of captivity. He, he gave him provision of life. Uh, you know what? Whenever Abimelech was, was crashing down upon him, that king was coming out through there and uh, uh, seeking to, to capture his life. You know what? He was placing it in the one that had the ability not only to take life, uh, uh, but take soul too. You know, the Word of God tells us that no, not to fear a man who can only destroy the body, but to fear the one who can destroy both the body and the soul. And uh, you know, as I'm sitting here thinking about this right here, is that there's but one thing that always keeps us in the good. There's only one thing that always keeps us with our mind set up on the prize. You know what? You know, I'm going to tell you, I know that we fell and come short. Uh, uh, you know what? We're imperfect human beings. Uh, uh, you know, there's no flesh. It, it wars against us every day, no matter how many years. You've been saved no matter how straight you try to walk. Uh, you know, this old flesh is worn at all times. But you know what? There will never be anything that will keep you from sin except the fear of the Lord and the Spirit that dwells within you to keep you from these things. That's right. You know what? David right here, he's beginning to speak about an angel of the Lord. And he said, The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear Him and deliver them. You know, at this time, we know that the Spirit of the Lord had not come in indwelling of a man. But David, you know, whenever he spoke about the Spirit of the Lord and, and the angel of the Lord, as, as it was said, he talked about encampment. And, I, I, you know, an encampment, I believe, is a term used of the military. You know, we know there is a spiritual warfare going around us all the time. You may not be able to see it, but uh, rest assured by the Word of God, it's happening. Amen. And, you know, as David began to talk about the angel of the Lord, you know, we see angel of the Lord mentioned so many times in the Word of God. And, uh, you know, in different places, most of the time it's a ministry in spirit. Uh, but sometimes it's in the likeness of God himself. And, uh, uh, you know, and as, at this time right here, the only thing that I can think about a man, whenever he begins to talk about those that fear him and, uh, and the deliverance is given, uh, you know what, I was delivered one time. Uh, you know what, whenever I was a young boy, whenever I felt that feeling of conviction, 
come upon me. I, I, you know, the Lord had reached down and convicted my heart, let me know where I was. You know what? I haven't done a whole lot wrong, but I was lost. You know what? I didn't have a personal relationship with Him. You know what? Uh, there is something that He pointed out right here uh, in the next verse. He says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know what? I was taught something growing up that, uh, you know, it was kind of stuck with me as I've gotten into being an adult. Didn't realize it was happening to me then, but uh, later on it was revealed to me. You know, when it takes learning, uh, you know what, it's something for you to hear. A lot of people can hear something and do it. Some people, it takes a visual uh, aspect. They have to see it to be able to do it. Some people have to get their hands on and actually get in there and do all these things in order to learn something. But you know what, whatever David says, he says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is inviting in right here for us to have a personal relationship with God. You know, and the only way to do that today, the only possible way that you can have a personal relationship with Him, rest assured God loves you. God loves you in every condition that you're in. He might hate the sin that's going on, but He loves you this morning enough that He desires a personal relationship. The only way you can do that is having Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The one that's able to deliver. I was delivered by Him becoming Lord and Savior of my life. So, you know, as I was sitting here and I was thinking about, uh, the, well, then why should I fear? If I've been delivered, if I've been taken out of all the paranoia that I had in my life, you know, that night whenever I was a uh, uh, seven-year-old boy and, I, uh, you know, when I was convicted like that, uh, I felt like that if I laid my head down that night and went to sleep, I wasn't going to wake up. And if I woke, didn't wake up, I knew where I was going to be. That scared me to death. You know, sometimes, and I believe all the time, mostly, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I think by the Word of God, it talks about a fear of going to hell. It, that's what it was for me. I didn't want to die and go to hell. I knew who Jesus was. I knew who, who God was. I was taught that as a young child. And uh, you know what? I knew that I wanted to go to heaven, and I don't believe that anybody in their right mind does not want to go to heaven. You know what? I don't care what boy you're doing. I don't know what our past is. We've all got different things, but at the same time, we know that we have a God that loves all. And by His perfect will that we know today, He isn't nudge and perish, but all come to repentance. It doesn't matter where we came from. It doesn't matter what we've done. You know what? All He's requiring in return is a fear that He has the ability to do all things in a way, such a way that He is the Creator. You know what? That's what a lot of people are looking past is that, that, that we, we're in a time now to where there's so much man-made things. There's so many things that we, that we attribute to ourselves that we forget about what God's done. Without Him, none of this is possible. You know what? There, there are some good things out there today. You know, a lot of conveniences we've got. And I, I'm not bashing on any of that. And I believe that all good gifts come from God above. But, uh, you know, today, if it wasn't for Him, if we don't begin to recognize Him for who He truly is and fear Him in that, Knowing that any given moment, the Word of God tells us that there's going to come a point in time to where He's going to send His Son back to go get His children to tell them to come on home. And, uh, and you know what? And after this, we know that the wrath of God is going to be poured out on a world of indignation. You know what? It's going to be poured out upon all the sin uh, that has been accumulated over time. You know what? I'm going to tell you right now, we know by the Word of God that sin's already been judged enough to where God has already appointed a time that this is going to happen. You don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But at any given moment, I believe that the world could come to a screeching halt like that. We think that we're making progression. You know what? Uh, things that are happening, uh, uh, medical uh, uh, research is going uh, through the roof from where it used to be. Uh, you know what? We've got so much technology right now. We think we're making it by leaps and bounds, but God can call it quits right now. You know what? If that ain't something to fear, then I don't know what is. But He doesn't demand it out of the way that we're, we live in paranoia all the time. You know what, Brother Ron? This morning, Doug taught one of the toughest scriptures, I believe, that it is for a lot of people to teach. Uh, you know what? Because they don't realize what it takes to live in the fear of God. Amen. You know what? Because that's what that scripture is talking about. Uh, you know what? It's not, it's not that a man can be saved more than once, because the Word was strictly clear on that, that a man cannot be saved more than once. That's right. But it says that a man, well, whenever he is saved, and I believe this is all my heart, that whenever you're saved, you want to live for him. That's right. You want to live in the fear of God. You know what? If we live in the fear of God, the one that has all things in his hand, we don't have to fear anything else. You know what? How good is it to know that you can fear one that loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son down on that cross, that you have an opportunity to have an eternity of rest. How good is it to be in those hands versus what it is to be in the hands of the world? So this is where I believe that David was talking about right here. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because he takes all that away 
and gives us so much more. To fear the Lord, to live in His way, to give everything you've got to Him. That sacrifice that you made of giving up all your worldly lusts and venturing after what is, is, is right in His sight. Uh, you know what? Blessed is that man that trusted in Him. You know what? David, he was speaking by experience. He went through a tough time right here. You know what? And I've always thought about the Word of God. And in the Old Testament, it's always better to learn from somebody else's mistakes and That's make right. your own. You know what? I, I would a whole lot rather uh, watch those safety videos as to go out and uh, test it out for myself to know what to watch out for. The Word of God is that. It gives us what to watch out for. It lays us rest assured you can trust in it or not. But God's already laid it out. There is a spiritual warfare that has been battled right now. And the refuge is in Him. But you know what? It's up to us to make a decision for ourselves. Oh, taste and see. Come find out for yourself. Make, make, make that one-on-one -on -one contact with Him. And see that He's not what He says He is. He's a faithful God that will stay by you all the time. You know what? So that's whenever David says, hey, you know what's even better? That, that's what the Scripture is here for us for. To let us know, is it over here the Lord, ye, ye His saints, for there is no want for them to fear Him. You know what? Things in our life that are given so many times, over and over and over again. And like we said earlier, sometimes we're not even in the, in the capacity of ourselves to realize that God's actually doing it. You know what? Shame on us for it. But it, you know that way it happens. Well, you know what? He's still there. He's still taking care of every need, every breath that we take. He's supplying that oxygen. Every, every bit of food that gets on our table, He's supplying us the strength to make sure that it was there. That's right. You know what? If it not been for Him, and you know what? We wouldn't eat. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to uh, take care of our families. We wouldn't be able to go out and uh, ha live a happy daily life and uh, uh, enjoy the things. Hey, you know what? We, the other night we went bowling. And I, I can't think of the last time I went bowling and had fun. Uh, you know what? And we went out for Heather's birthday. And uh, you know what? I was sitting there. I was thinking about it. You know what? There with friends. And uh, uh, you know what? Being able to have a little bit of fun. But it had not been for the health that we had. Had it not been uh, for, for the little bit of money we had in our pocket to be able to go out and do those things. Had, if it had not been for God supplying it from the very beginning, you, you, anything you've got, you've got a foundation to it. And I'll tell you right now that it's the, the author and finisher of our faith. It's the creator of the whole world. He's the one responsible for it. You know what? Hey, I, I was sitting here and I was thinking about us as a church. Uh, you know what uh, What makes this whole thing work? It's, I, and I'm going to tell you right now, it, it takes people showing up. It takes people coming to church. You know, people got to come to church. Our tithes and offers, they go in and they it, it let the church operate. But why do we do it? Why do we live for the Lord? Why, why do we have this, this function about ourselves to do this in a place that's away from our home? It's because that we've all had the fear of the Lord put within us. That we trusted within Him. We see, we've tasted, we've seen that the Lord is good. You know what? I, I was thinking about the Scripture once again in the Sunday school lesson. It told us about uh, the, the, the goodness and His mercies that He has and uh, you know what? When we've tasted of that, how can we go back? How can we? You know what? I'm going to tell you what. I, I strayed. I, I, I went away. After knowing how good God was, I, I got back out in the world and I've done these things. I'm not proud of it. But I'm here to tell you right now that there is nothing out there that will compare to what He's got. That's right. Because you know what? I believe He set it up that way. I believe that God made sure. You know, I'm going to tell you, I, I believe He's a foreknowing God. He created everything perfect. Whenever Adam was placed in that garden, he was perfect. Every creation, every, every little creature that he made it was perfect. And you know what? But he, I believe, and I'm going to be careful with my words on this because, because I don't want anybody to misunderstand, but he made sure that one day after a while, the best was yet to come. He made sure that when we would fail and come short, when we took everything that he gave, every little perfect gift, that came from above, that He placed on this earth, when we took it and we messed it up, He made sure the best was yet to come. And I believe it came in His Son, Jesus Christ. That He could be Lord and Savior of our life. And when He's like that today, He makes us into a new, a perfect creation once again. That if we live in the Spirit, like the Bible tells us, that a man that lives in that Spirit is the same as a perfect man. We live by the Spirit of God. It's not of ourselves. Living even the fear of the Lord gets us there. But what we see right here is that now David is willing to teach this. He says, Come, you children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the way of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. And you know, I, I was sitting here and I was thinking about this right now. Is it where David's at in life? Where he's sitting at right now? You know, he's going to come through a hard time.
things that happened to him, and uh, he learned the goodness of the Lord by actually experience. But you know what? It's so much easier to take the Word of God and teach somebody about it. If we go to this Word right here, and we learn of it, everything it's got for us, you know what? I'm going to tell you that, that we're going to come about times and decisions that we have to make, and they're going to be difficult for us. They're going to be difficult decisions because we got this old flesh going one way and the Spirit of God leading up. You know what? And I'm going to tell you, I'm not saying that it's hard to live a Christian life because I don't believe that. I've heard people say it time and time again. The only reason why it's hard is because we allow ourselves to get weak on our faith and we don't trust in God enough. You know what? You can always trace it back to yourself if we fail to come short because God didn't fail. He made sure that we had everything we need. By reading in the Word of God, by living in, his, in the fear of Him, uh, that gets us there. And you know what? David said, he said, I'll teach you. You know what? How's He going to teach us? Because He's in the Spirit. He's doing things that are of God. I believe the Spirit of God rested upon David. We know how He was anointed king. Uh, you know what? And, and I, I, I believe the Word of God and what it stands for today. I believe that old when it was placed on His head. It was showing that God recognized Him as the King of Israel. But you know what? What we see right here is it's just pointing to the thing that is to come. Because you know what? God set up a king that's going to be king forever. He set up one that's going to have an everlasting kingdom. One that will always sit upon the throne. And he's the one that we serve today. He's the one that will deliver us out of all things. You know what? To live in the fear of the Lord is to make sure that we've got protection. Make sure that we've got coverage. Make sure we've got deliverance through everything in life. Wouldn't that happen while all of your troubles that you're facing right now, they're going to go away. You ain't going to have to deal with them no more. But to know that we went through this whole life with all the troubles that we faced and all, all the times that we had, the good times and the bad times, when we get down to the end of life's journey, there's going to have to be a final deliverance. There's going to have to be one that's going to take it out. And all that's going to matter at that given point in time is if you've been saved or not. That'll be the only thing. If that blood has been applied to your heart. You know, if that's not happening, then I'm going to tell you what, you're going to have to learn by experience. That's a sad time, but it's coming for a lot of people. You know what? I don't want it to happen. I believe God sent His only begotten Son that He died on the cross for all men. That whosoever would come could be saved. And you know what? Not really the issue of parents, but all come to repentance. But now what we see is there's going to be a time coming where people are going to have to learn by experience what the fear of God is. And you know what? It's going to strike them. There's not going to be any way to go. You know what? I'm going to tell you, a lot of times they, it, it takes somebody getting scared about something. You know what happened? What, a lot of times, the last, the last option for us is to pray to God and ask Him for something. You know what? A lot of times it takes bad things to happen to us in life before we ever pray about it. But you know what? It'd be a lot better to know and learn right now. Learn where you stand. Learn, learn what He's about. Learn that we can take Him before whatever even happens. And things can be taken care of. So you know what? He gives advice. He tells them how to be, how, if you desire life, if you, if you love many days, you know what? I've seen a lot of good Christian people that haven't had many days. Uh, you know what? They live good lives and taking it what we think is way too early. But you know what? That's not what it's, it's not speaking about time as we know it. It's talking about God's time. That's right. It's talking about the things that matter the most. You know what? The richness of life. You know what? If you if you ever wanted to have a, a richness, of, you know, like I say, there is no good in living a life of fear except if you live in the fear of the Lord. Because when the fear of the Lord comes, it gives you everlasting peace, I believe. A peace that passes all understanding. Something that takes care of all these other wants that we have in life. So you know what, as I think about David, what he talked about right there, he ended it out, they tell you that very thing right there, to seek peace and pursue it. You know, if we're doing that today, I believe the Lord bless us. I believe He's coming by. We're going to face troubles. Troubles and trials are coming. We always talk about troubles when we get up here. I think the Word of God is a word that can speak to you in the life that you're living right now. It wouldn't be no good to us if it didn't speak to the circumstances we're facing. That's right. It's the living Word. It's what we can go to. So right now, let's seek peace. And let's pursue after. Because when we do, I believe that we can find uh, rest assured that no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, whenever it comes time to close this old book up of this life, you know what? There's going to be a final deliverance that will come by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because that blood has been applied to us today. Promises have already been made to one that is faithful and just to do all things either to accomplish what He said in His Word right here. So let's back it up and do this. So we're going to stand with the song of invitation. If you have a need, I want you to know the offer is always open.